Part 1. Access to Information from Written Text Read the article below and then answer questions 1 to 8. London's Unwanted Guests The evening started peacefully at Long Lane Park in London. But just before sunset, five bright green parakeets flew noisily through the air towards a row of tall trees. Within minutes, hundreds more were flying towards the branches where they spend the night. I was delighted when I first saw one or two birds flying over my house, says writer Dick Hayden, who lives near the park. But with three hundred of them squawking all at once, I can't get any work done. These days, his experience is shared by more and more people throughout the city. The friendly, colorful birds have long been imported from Asia to Britain as pets. Over the years, a few escaped from their cages or were released by their owners and could be seen in the London sky. But now their descendants seem to be everywhere. The number of parakeets flying around the city is now estimated at around 32,000, up from only 1,500 in 1995. We didn't expect to see a wild bird from another part of the world adapt so well to conditions in a British city, says Jay Smith of the Royal Bird Society. This has never happened here before. The cause of the population explosion is not entirely clear, although several explanations have been offered. One possibility, for example, is that the birds have a larger supply of their favorite foods, since tropical plants have become increasingly popular with London gardeners. It has also been suggested that the warmer summers Britain has had in recent years may be responsible. So far, no research has been done to test any of the ideas. But whatever the reason for their large numbers, the fact is that the parakeets have become a serious nuisance to Londoners. They eat the fruit off the trees, make a mess of the city's parks and gardens, and wake residents up with their squawks. Nevertheless, Londoners might consider themselves lucky, since parakeets have done much greater damage elsewhere in the world. In certain parts of India, for instance, they have caused the destruction of whole fields of wheat and corn. At the moment, London's parakeets are not showing any interest in leaving the city for agricultural areas. However, British authorities are watching the situation closely so that they can take action if this changes. Questions Answer questions 1 to 8 in English according to the article. In questions 1, 3, and 5, circle the number of the correct answer. In the other questions, follow the instructions. One, what do we learn from lines 1 to 7 about the parakeets in London? One, when they first arrived in the city. Two, how they react to people. Three, why they are most active in the evenings. 4. How they affect Londoners. 2. What is explained in lines 8 to 14? Put a V by the two correct answers. 1. Why parakeets prefer to live in cities. 2. Why parakeets have been brought to Britain. 3. Why the parakeets in London are being counted. 4. How parakeets escape from their cages. 5. What is unusual about the parakeets in London? 6. How the Royal Bird Society studies parakeets. 3. According to lines 8 to 14, what change has taken place in the last few decades? 1. More parakeets have been imported into Britain. 2. The number of parakeets in London has increased. 3. The popularity of parakeets has increased. 4. More parakeets have been released by their owners. 4. In lines 18 and 19, we are told that the warmer summers in Britain may be responsible. Responsible for what? 
5. What are we told about the explanations mentioned in lines 15 to 23? 1. Some of them are hard to understand. 2. Some of them are better than others. 3. There is no scientific evidence to support them. 4. They were offered a long time ago. 6. Complete the sentence. The information in lines 20 to 23 helps explain why Londoners, hmm. 7. Complete the sentence. In lines 24 to 29, the writer mentions India as an example of a place where, hmm. 8. Complete the sentence according to lines 24 to 29. British authorities will take action if London's parakeets, hmm. Note, the exam continues on page 6. Part 2, Access to Information from Spoken Text. בחינות הבגרות באנגלית, מועד קיץ תשע"ג 2013. לתלמידים אינטרניים ואקסטרניים הנבחנים בשאלון ה', מודול E. שלום רב. היום אתם נבחנים בבחינות הבגרות בשפה האנגלית, ובעוד רגע ישודר הקטע בהבנת הנשמע. נשמיע לכם את הקטע הזה פעמיים. הודעה חשובה למשגיחי הבחינות ולנבחנים, אסור להקליט את הקטעים. יש להאזין לקטעים בשתי הקריאות שבשידור בלבד. בסיום השידור, על התלמידים לשים את מקלטי הרדיו או כל מכשיר אחר בצידי החדר. Hello, students. Today you are sitting for your Bagrut examination in English. In a moment, you will hear the text of your listening comprehension test, which will be read twice. And now, the first broadcast. Verta, Hashidur Harishon. Hello, listeners. I'm Clara Tompkins, and with me in the studio today is Robert Wilson, who will tell us about his unusual job. Hello, Robert. Good morning, Clara. It's good to be here. Robert, you are what is called a ghost writer. So I'd like to start with the most basic question. What exactly is a ghost writer? Well, a ghostwriter is a professional writer who is paid to write other people's books for them. In other words, I do the writing, but the readers don't know that, because my name does not appear on the cover or anywhere in the book. Instead, the name on the cover of the book is that of my client. Ghostwriting is more common than you might think. In fact, Most books by famous people are actually written by ghostwriters. I myself have written books for several artists and politicians. But isn't that dishonest? I mean, the readers are given the wrong idea of who the author is and might even buy the book because they think someone else wrote it. I understand why some people might feel there's a problem, but I don't see it that way. It's true that I provide the writing talent, but my clients are the ones who provide all the ideas and information, and they're always very much involved in the whole project. I spend hours talking with them and often meet with their family, friends, and colleagues as well. I also make sure that I understand exactly what they want the book to say. Only then do I begin the actual writing. So it really is my client's book more than mine. I see. So who are your clients? Well, as I said, some are well-known personalities, but many are just ordinary people with an interesting story to tell. Others are experts who are interested in sharing their knowledge of a certain subject and want the help of a professional writer. For example, I've written a book for an economics professor on how to make your business more successful, and I'm currently writing one for a child psychologist on how to be a better parent. The people who hire me to write their books for them may feel that they don't have the skills to do it themselves. In other cases, they are simply too busy. After all, writing a book is a huge project. In my experience, It can often take over a year to complete a book. 
That is a long time. Which brings me to my last question. Wouldn't you rather spend all that time writing your own books? Like other ghostwriters, I do write my own books as well. And of course, these have my name on the cover. In fact, many of my clients are people who decided to contact me after having read a book of mine. Obviously, in my own books, I can express my personal ideas. But as a ghostwriter, I get the opportunity to write about people and subjects that I wouldn't know anything about otherwise. And if my client is famous, I can be sure lots of people will buy the book. Believe me, I'm extremely proud when one of my books is a success, whether or not the readers know that I wrote it. Yes, I can understand that. And I wish you lots of success with all your books. Thank you, Robert, for coming to the studio today. And to you, listeners, goodbye. זה היה השידור הראשון, אפשר להשיב על השאלות, נשמע כמה צלילים, ואחר כך נשמיע את הקטע השני. Hidden Authors 9. What does Robert tell listeners at the beginning of the interview? 1. Why he became a ghostwriter. 2. How popular his books are. 3. What a ghostwriter does. 4. Why famous people write books. 10. Which of the following might be seen as a problem with ghostwriting? 1. Readers don't know who really wrote the book. 2. Many clients feel the book isn't really theirs. 3. Too many people are involved in the project. 4. Ghostwriters don't always understand their clients. 11. What does Robert do before he starts writing for his clients? Give one answer. 12. Why does Robert mention the book he wrote for the economics professor? 1. To show what subjects he usually writes about. 2. To explain how he became an expert in economics. 3. To show that experts use ghostwriters too. 4. To explain why it is hard to be a ghostwriter. 13. According to Robert, why might people use a ghostwriter? Give one reason. 14. What does Robert explain in his last answer? 1. How he is different from other ghostwriters. 2. Why it is harder for him to write his own books. 3. Why his clients are proud of him. 4. What makes his job interesting. Bad luck.